If you've never experienced drafting, you gotta get one of these. To experience. <laughs> to experience. It. Oh yeah. Like, Look at that little guy. Yeah, it's cute, huh? Fifty <laughs> little gas ports. Fifty-five too. millimeter. On the Mustang down there, it made four sixty-nine. What? Damn. Twenty-three. Okay. Damn. That's wow. a stock stroke. That's big. This is David Hugh of What's DH up, guys? Motoring. <laughs> He is a small bore specialist. You may not know what that means at this point right now. <laughs> it doesn't you, mean what you think it means. But you will in a second. <laughs> Man, you cleaned this place up. It looks nice. Just for you, bro. Just for me? Yeah, we hired someone and everything. I was making a joke with RC earlier, um, which is his, uh, what, his He's data analyst. I don't know. Dana, <laughs> data analyst? I don't know what he is. Yeah. He sits behind a computer We'll get there. I was like, <laughs> I'm not actually coming. I just wanted DH to clean the shop up. <laughs> It worked. Dude, it worked. It looks really good. And a week later, it won't be like this, so we'll enjoy it while it's like. Okay. So, you've been racing motorcycles since you were like this big, right? Yeah, I started off on dirt. Um, like everyone rode dirt bikes with my dad, and once I got a car, that kind of all ended. And then the you got back in the bikes, but they didn't get any bigger. They didn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they didn't get any bigger. So. You're basically a yeah. Grom specialist at this point, I would say, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we started with the BMW stuff and um, messing around with tuning our own things and a lot of, obviously, all fuel injection. So once these came out and there were no more carburetors, they're all fuel injection. I was like, oh, dope. We're getting that and we're going to tinker. And when did we really get Groms the first time? 2013, 2014. Yeah. And like, yeah, 10 years ago. Um, That's cool. What I think was super appealing about these was like, they're so simple. So to see an increase in performance, like anything would do it. And then you get to tune it to match it. And like, <laughs> back the, then we, it was so simple. It yeah, so it was By cool like the top tinker. speed thing. Yeah, exactly. Because we're like, oh, it does 68. And yeah. then you're like, oh, I modded the air box. This thing looks crazy. What? And then you got an e-bike next so, to it. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of dabbling that. Like I hate to say it, but it's the future. It's yeah, um, it's part of the future. That's It's sure. part of the future, for sure. Yeah. We're seeing that with the cars, with, with everything. Um, this bike is uh, kind of one of those like shop builds that you can never sell because you're way too invested. Yeah, this is a Grom um, still? It's a CRF 110 chassis, okay, 110. Grom forks, Grom swing arm, Grom motor, the old Grom motor, but it's bullet case, bullet block. Yeah, what's that clutch, head, dude? Dual four cam. valve, dual cam? Yeah, it's a four valve, dual cam, 181cc. Uh, Dry clutch, so the clutch material doesn't contaminate. I was things. looking at oil. that. Yeah, yeah. Hydraulic as well, and then the, the cases hold extra oil, which make up for the volume that you lose when you put the dry clutch on. Got it. So, and another thing, what's cool about these is like, if you're gonna rebuild a motor in a car, like it's you know it's a couple day process to get it out and split it. Like this is a day job at most. Yeah. To swap a crank out. Carbon so, fiber wheels, oh, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's crazy. What does that head off of? Is that just uh, it's custom? made for the Grom. It's made by a company called Kotaka out of Japan. Yeah. Um, dual cam. It's the only dual cam option for these four valve stock ones. Uh, stock bikes are two valve. This is your cylinder head, or the it's your block. Block? Machine the block? Yeah, that's cylinder. your block. I guess. Okay. The cases and uh, cover and clutch are made by a company called SMR. They're out of Taiwan, and what's funny is like I think there was a translation thing there because it stands for Sex Machine Racing. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. So how much, uh, like what's the power? Well, I guess, what's a stock Grom make? So bone stock right off the showroom floor on my dyno, they make like high sevens, low eights. About eights, about an average. And they rev to? They rev the stock limiter is 9250. Oh, that's pretty high. And that's a so, new one, like a 23 or something? They're all, so you, the old bikes and new bikes make the same power. Okay. Um, the curve's a little bit different shape, but for the most part, peak's about the same. This one is a 181. Um, it runs, that actually runs on pump gas, but uh, the highest we've seen with that pipe is just under 30. It's like 29 to change. Oh my horsepower. god. And yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> four, four times, but it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's a built, like a crazy crank too, or stock? Yeah, crank? it's a forged crank stock yeah, stroke yeah. though. Okay. But so it's all bore forged. for 180 cc. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then, damn, that's crazy. And how many? How much torque does it make? 15. 15. And the revs to? Revs to 12.5. 12.5. So it damn. screams. That's crazy. The head looks and nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So what's nice about that is I haven't gotten it to float. Like we've taken it to 13 and it won't float, to, it won't float the valves. Wow. Got it. It doesn't make the power up there. It starts to fall off a little bit before, uh, before that, but. Some bigger cams then, dude. 
yeah, I don't know who's gonna cut dual cams. Yeah. So I, I mean, it's it makes usable power everywhere. I haven't found a need for more. Thirty um, sounds nuts on this little yeah. thing. Anyway, I can't imagine. And then this frame, swing arm. That's a dirt bike frame. Swing yeah, so it's lighter probably than a. Uh, it's a little frame. bit lighter, but the ergos are better for racing and swimmer. Um, yeah, the wheelbase a little bit shorter. So it's more of a scalpel than a Grom. A Grom's probably easier to ride, but it's like driving a GT3 versus an E90 M3. Like a lot of people would actually be faster in E90 M3. Oh yeah. But like you got a guy that can wheel it. It's fast. This car's faster. That's what yeah, this is for sure. Like most people would probably be slower on this bike. Got it. I'd be slower on this bike. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so I mean, like, we go a little extreme on the shop fuel tank too. Oh, it's just the cover. Oh, it's the cover, okay. Yeah. You don't think the funk will tell you <laughs> Yeah. So how much lighter is this than a regular Grom, you think? All in. Car that bike's probably around. about 170 pounds. A bone okay. stock Grom's about 220. Yeah, so that's a lot lighter than that. You can get Grom's to about 10 pounds heavier than that. Okay. In, rate, in full race trim. Got it. So like 180 pounds for yeah. the Grom stuff. That's cool. Yeah. That's Well, sick. we lost the weight on this was um, the wheels, obviously, are about yeah, three pounds each. Big. And then the forks are air forks, so there's no uh, mechanical spring. It's all Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say, too, the carbon wheel thing is tricky because when you dyno it, you don't see gains from that, really. You'll actually probably see a loss. Um, I wouldn't say a loss, but it's not measurable. Yeah. But it's, it's like, like lightning a flywheel. But riding it, it's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Actually, the biggest difference was the turn in. They mm. don't have as much of a gyro effect Inertia. on tip in like a cast aluminum. That wheel. makes sense. Which makes it kind of twitchy and less stable mid-turn, but it's so flickable. And the rake of this fork is different than a ground too, probably with the Because the, the head angle tube is yeah. different on the head tube angle, yeah. Don't stall. It's a little much. Like if you're like, oh, I gotta like, take off from this light quick, you're gonna be thinking about it. For sure. You're, you're th exactly, you're thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, it's not really, like, it's tagged, but I never ride on the street. Right. We just raced that one. Smells expensive, too. <laughs> that one's on T4. T4. Yeah. I was gonna you can tune down front, but we run T4. Safety. Yeah. Yeah. Super hot. It's really, it's a light bike, too. It really is a light bike. It rides super well with that wheel and tire setup. It rides super light. Yeah, just the response, like tipping into it and stuff, is really good too. Damn, that's crazy. It's fucking fast. You're like, go to limiter. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> to limiter for yeah. second gear. Yeah, I wouldn't even smash it in first. I feel like it would come around. Come up in first. Oh, obviously, yeah. it comes up in second if you're not leaned forward. The hardest part is like race, like. Launching it when you need to be over the front and you're in first. Oh, I bet. Terrifying. Yeah, much, yeah dude, exactly. If it hooks, you're it either going bogs over. for a second or it's coming up. I don't yeah. Know. The power band seems pretty broad, but you're right. It is does make peak power. It's broad, but when you're like the, that bike's main competitor on the car tracks, the CRF 150R, those yeah. little, like liquid cooled race bikes. Yeah. Those make like bone stock about 24, 25 horse, and they're lighter and they're close ratio six speeds. So you have to it. gear it there to be competitive, competitive with like yeah. if you got a rider on them, you know, they're fast. So like okay, so then you get an e-bike next to it. What do you guys do tuning of those or anything? We're just or? Trying to get into it. That okay, bike cool. actually belongs to Stefano Mesa, uh, Moto America rider. Okay. We have another one of those. This guy here actually, it's the same bike with the dirt trim that I've put a controller on it. We're trying to work the bugs out. Okay. Slowly learning about that whole world, but to get more power out of it. And what's what are those like to ride? Like what kind of power do these make? They make, uh, on this dyno, like six 
wheel horse tire. It's like a stock CRF one ten. Okay. A little bit more torque. Yep. They're fun. They're and super the fun. It's a great decent. for a spec class because like, what I didn't realize initially is like you get on e bikes like even there's some surrounds in there we ride too but you go mid turn there's no noise you can run your mouth to the dude in front of you <laughs> and have full conversations. Which is great. That's like, awesome. That's fun. You know, like we're old, like we, we don't take it super serious. It's just fun to mess around with your boys and that's you know, fun. Talk a bunch of trash. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and like, is it co comparable, like weight wise and riding wise? Or it's actually it a little lighter. Oh, that's um, cool. <clears throat> riding wise, it's about the same. I would have thought it would have been heavier. Yeah. And yeah, the only thing that sucks is the dealing with charging of the track all the time. Yes. Because uh, when we did that Suron day, mm -hmm. I was like, dude, this is you need three batteries for this. Yes, that's. And I think that's a battery charger thing. Eventually, we'll get there where they can fast charge yeah, technology. But yeah, it's probably it available. It just doesn't make sense cost-wise right now. Yeah, I mean the way to do it is to buy a bigger battery that'll last you almost all day. But battery technology is not quite there to be cost-effective. So like a strong, a good strong battery is two grand. Yep. Yep. They don't even make them for this. You have to have a custom battery built. Yep. It's a lot of helmets. What's the deal with the helmets? Are those all yours? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize he had so many helmets. I like helmets. Yeah. <laughs> School. Safety first. Yeah. The, the Evo helmet. I think it might be with concussions, but I'm, I've had a few. <laughs> That's just because I knock out really easy. <laughs> yeah. Have <laughs> you ever noticed my right eye closing while I'm talking? That's, <laughs> That's concussion number 13 happening. <laughs> Sweet. So then you manufacture parts, and that's mainly yeah. the big, th big thing in your so, bread and butter. Um, that on that bike we only did the cylinder. That so, run real quick back to that. That was a bike that we built last year for a four-hour endurance race at Barber Motorsports Park for their Barber Small Bore event, and it was a collaboration between me and three or four other companies that we work pretty closely with. So it was cool to have everyone have their oh, yeah, part. work together and build yeah. something cool. Mm -hmm. That's that it. CJR's the next door. We can walk over there a little later. Uh, Mo Power out of Denver, Avil Motorsports out of Ohio, and the Speed Shop out of Atlanta, Georgia. That's cool. It was we built the bike like a day before the race, so it didn't shake it right. down. Yeah, yeah, you know that. that's how drifting goes. Like any motorsport, actually. <laughs> that's how you get your best, right? There. Yeah. <laughs> when it works. Yeah, you got a bike that has a bunch of your parts on it. We can so, look at it. Or? Yes. So we'll start with this guy. This is the dirt version of that one. Okay. Um, that's also Grand Motor. The forks are oh, off. That has of a, a different cylinder head, though. Yep, that's a Coso four valve cylinder head. Okay, um, single cam. Far, single cam. Okay. Far more popular than. Oh the wait, cam. is that eight valve then? No, that's four it's valve. Still four valve. Okay. Yep. I was gonna say it has. There's no way they could jam eight valves in that. So that's cool. Yep. This bike's a two twenty three. Your adjustments here for tappets and stuff, probably. Yep. yep. Um, Mo How power out. What was the size of this? Two twenty three. Okay. Damn. That's wow. stock stroke. Huge. That's big. Still stock stroke. Holy shit. That's the that's max force size. You can yeah. Go. How big is that piston? Like two and a half inches. Seventy mils. Yeah. So, yeah. Holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm not nearly as good in the dirt as I am on the street. So going back to what I was saying, I'm faster on like a more stock bike than this thing. Got it. But there's some kids out there that rip, and um, we let them race it. And, and how much power crazy. does that make? This one doesn't make quite as much power because we're stuck using a header from one of the dirt bikes. And okay. They're made for like 10 horse bikes. Ton of torque. Uh, I think last time we had on there, it made 28. Oh, damn. So it, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> on these little wheels and tires. And short like wheelbase. Short wheelbase. Um, it's, it's hard to ride. Yeah, but I imagine. But when you see someone that can ride it, ride it, it's cool. It's cool. You're like, it's that little cool. thing is yeah. ripping. That's cool. And then BBR makes the uh, swing arm swing and rear shock mount and shock. The forks are off of a KTM 50SX that we had valved and sprung, also air forks. I guess to give a little perspective, like a CRF 250 is going to make like around 45 horsepower, right? No, the 250, I, I don't think they're quite there yet. I, oh, okay. I want to say they're high 30s, maybe 40. But like um, an older 250, like a mid-2000s 250, this will give it a run. If That's you can wild. hang on, if you can ride it. <laughs> So you did so, the piston and stuff in that too? No, that's Mo Power out of um, okay. Denver, you were saying? Uh, Colorado Springs. Oh, Colorado, okay. Got yeah. it. That's cool. Do you do a lot of the tuning on these too? Yeah, we do all the tuning. Okay, all the tuning, yeah. So, sweet. And what's the This is on software? a full standalone, so is okay. that. They're on a company called A Racer. Um, they make the standalone and a separate wideband module so we can target our fuel tune. Yeah, I noticed it had a wideband, <clears throat> but didn't have yep. a gauge. So it was cool that it's using target wideband. Yep. It's like your Miata. Yep. Until it blows out. <laughs> Until it falls out. On the out. way here. <laughs> my O2 sensor blew out of my downpipe. 
It's yeah. lovely. So Sounds these these it. two bikes are collab bikes that we did a lot, all the assembly and cool. um, tuning on. Nice. And they're kind of yeah shop feature bikes. Sick. Let's check out the shop. Yeah. Okay, so here's the shop. What's what, what is this thing? It's a Honda Monkey, bro. This is basically a stock looking Honda Monkey. Okay. It's got our high compression stock four piston. Um, basically what we call our stage three kits. I like, don't really like the stage names, you know, but it helps, it really helps with the, the customer and help kind of identify like the setup on the stuff. Yeah, the marketing of it too, yep. a little bit. Yeah. So it's our high comp piston, our camshaft, um, intake. I think it's got a Yoshimura exhaust. Yeah, it looks like titanium flash. exhaust. That one, yeah, it's a tie muffler. Sick. So that's what our full stage three setup is. They make about 14 horsepower on the dyno. Oh shit, double yeah. stock horsepower. Just yeah. almost double, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And they rev high, they rev to 10 and a half, 11. So it's a fun bike to ride. And what's the, like that stage cost with those mods? So we sell, it's obviously about, without, the without the oil cooler and then taking exhaust about 400 bucks. So Wait. it's budget friendly. Damn, so you can double the horsepower for yeah. 400 bucks. Yeah. That's an ECU flash. ECU, cam, piston, cam. Piston. And then you have to have your own intake exhaust. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like that's really cheap to double the horsepower. I mean, maybe I should raise prices. Yeah, yeah I'm like, <laughs> but I was saying, like, back, I mean, this is 10 years ago, but when we had that Brian S kit, it only made 15 horsepower. Yeah, they make the torque because of the displacement, but right. they didn't rev, and basically what, I think the, the, the big cost the is problem. we couldn't flash the ECUs back then. Right. So you're spending oh, money on the power dino commanders. Jet thing. Yeah, which are just, oh it's a piggyback. God. Yeah, it was awful. So it was just intercepting signals and it didn't quite, it wasn't very really refined. Right. They now have a, a PV3 that allows you to flash a stock ECU. Okay. But back then that's the only thing was available. Got it. So yeah, so so you flash the stock ECU. How, do, how does that happen? Someone that you keep stock ECUs in stock or they send uh, me their service? Okay. Or we buy, we try to keep new cores in from Honda so okay. that people can just buy a new one and not have to send theirs in. But we do have a lot of people just mail them in and we modify them and send them back. So you got a dyno, obviously, because you do a lot yeah. of tuning. What's this on the so dyno? This bike, bike is not a Honda. Medium it's bike. A, it's a, yeah, so Medium bike. that's a 14 inch wheel bike. It's a company called Freedom Scooters. The model is a Fighter 200. It's a 197cc, brand new to market. Um, some of you guys might know this guy actually, a guy named Chris Riggs who owns a GTR company, GTR BRZ, oh, Speed yeah, by Design. Yeah, yeah, Speed by Design. I so do that. he hopped into the market, hit me up, was like, hey man, building this bike, uh, we want some aftermarket support because that's really what makes a little bike sell, like people want to tinker with it, right? Yeah, of course. So he hooked us up with a bike, um, we've gotten into the ECU, we're in the process of dialing that setup in. Nice. Um, this is like a little bit of prototype intake stuff going on. So we made a velocity stack. Oh, because the intake's and, under the... Yep. Oh, cool. So those are actually in production right now. That's cool. Um, JTO's cutting a lot of aluminum for us. Oh, okay. But this Keep is actually a pretty easy. cool bike to ride because like, it's still it still feels small, but because it's a 197 like from the factory, it's got torque. Like it's a great commuter bike. Yeah. And what's what do you think that or have you dyno it yet? So stock, it made 15.8. Okay. Um, right now we're about 18. It weighs like 250 pounds or something. It's 260. 260 so yeah, right yeah. there. Uh, it comes with like a baffler in the baffle in the muffler. So okay. you pull that out, put our intake in, ECU flash, wide open tuning. We're about 18, 182. Oh, okay. Um, with way more mid range. Yeah, too, bigger so the power band. Yep. Yeah, the big power band is definitely the key. Like. Especially like if you're not only racing the thing. Like yeah, you wouldn't town. even notice the peak number because it's way up high. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how many people get on these things and they shift them at like five grand when they really need to be strong right. to go anywhere. Right. Uh, so Unless this place goes up. Yep. But yeah. That's cool. It's yep. neat to see another bike that enters that's like medium now instead of like, yeah. I feel like these are small bikes. That's like, like medium. There's so many guys that are you know, over six feet tall, mid 200s. Ripping groms. Ripping groms. So yeah. like something like that, that can pull them around a little better and that thing will cruise 70 yeah. out of the box. So yeah, I think cool. it's got a lot of potential. I like your giant diesel muffler, <laughs> vacuum pump. Yeah. Extraction system. Yeah, for the exhaust in oh, yeah. it. Does you that affect like power? That would be kind of just like a constant. So hit. unlike the 30 horse bikes, we'll lose half horse, three quarter really? horse. Oh. Yeah. That seems uh, like crazy out of a four inch exhaust. Yeah. I, I think the, it's the pump. It's the pump. Yeah. But anything below that, not much. Yeah. That's fine. So like I we need how... to do a power run, we'll pull it off and it just gets, it's loud. Oh yeah, I'm sure. And like, I don't want to like 
fall asleep and not know I'm falling asleep. So we <laughs> try to, like, run up there. I just love how you can have a whole dyno with a vehicle on it in the space in that space. Yeah, I love that. And what's that dyno rated for? Like how much power? Can Forty horse. Oh, okay. So just enough for what we're doing. Yeah, that's with perfect. It. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. Like you, the next step is three times the size too, yeah. probably. And what's nice is it's a Dynojet SD12, but it runs on the same WinPEP software as the big dynos. Oh, sick. So That's all the familiar. run files are interchangeable, are okay. compatible. So nice. I can send a run file to like Mike in Colorado and you can pull it up and compare it and vice versa. That's cool. Even if they have bigger dynos. That's cool. Sweet. So what else you got in here? This yellow bike is a 22 Grom, which is the current model. It's got our full 149cc kit on it. So that's jug piston, cam, oil cooler, intake exhaust, fuel injector. Um, that full setup will run you 12, 1300 ish, including the supporting mods. So you need like an oil cooler to keep it cool. Got it. Um, and that's because of the revs, you think? Or what is the oil cooler needed for? Yeah, so they just generate more heat with the displacement. Got it. Cylinder wall and all that. Yep. Thinner. It only makes like a one, two horse more than this, but it rides way faster because of the mid range torque from the displacement. Got it. Makes sense. So, like, just burping it around, it, it'll get up and go without having to let it sing. Yeah. That makes sense. And that far bike was the first 149 we ever did back in. So, long ago. So, the story with that bike actually. Uh, before this model, the current Gen Grom came to the United States. Uh, they were available in Thailand for over a year. Oh yeah, I remember so you talking about that. I paid a guy in Thailand to buy a bike, pull it apart, put it in boxes, like six FedEx boxes and express it over here. And when <laughs> I got here, we assembled it. So we had it a year early. Um, it's cool. Yeah, one day we'll get Honda support, but not yet. <laughs> well, that's one way so, to do it though. Yeah. That's uh, cool. Well, so to be we, ahead of it, be able to get ahead of everybody like that is obviously a big yeah. thing. And like Honda does that. There are companies that are here that got bikes early. Yeah. So, maybe now you will. Yeah, maybe now you <laughs> will. I mean, you're kind of the dude for this stuff. I Getting think. there. Yeah, I feel like whenever you look up Grom stuff, you're one of the guys that's there or brought up about it, for sure. But that motor is actually, you can see the cylinder is silver. That was the first 149 we ever did, the prototype. And I kind of put it on back in 2021 and haven't touched it to kind of see how it went. Uh, this past November, a few months ago, we were at Bushnell at the track. And Andrew Grafton was riding it and it yeah. shot the rod through the block. So oh, it's yeah. windowed still. Nice. Um, and actually the piston didn't fail or the kit didn't fail. What happened was there's a timing chain tensioner, like the old bikes, that yep. has a rubber wheel. And the rubber disintegrated out. and then it jumps timing and that's it. So there so are fixes right for that now. Yeah, the yeah. speed shop out of Atlanta makes a sweet roller bearing like metal fix. Nice. I just didn't want to touch anything on that and just kind of see how long it would last. And it went over three years or two and a half years racing it, just abusing it, and eventually, yeah, something let go, so. That's sick. That'll get rebuilt eventually. Sweet. What's your favorite bike here to ride? Monkey, bro. This I one? this thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah? It's so comfy. <laughs> I'm sure, it's a little more upright. Yeah, it's upright. And you got the bars, bars. We actually have the low seat on now, but the stock seat's like another two, three inches higher, so it's got a lot of padding, and it's yeah. just easy to, it's easy to ride. It's cool because it's like retro because the yeah. old monkeys were super cool. Exactly. So yeah, they modeled it off of the, the old bikes. Like yeah. Twin shock oh, it looks very similar. That's cool. The big turn signals and all that. That's cool. And like it's cool that it has obviously all the modern stuff and you guys can put a lot of your Grom related parts on it. Yep. Except, yeah, a lot of except probably the there. exhaust. Yep. The exhaust is, um, but a lot of companies still support it or they actually it. do support it. That's cool. And the demographic for this bike is actually like the older generation, like yeah, our, I believe our that. age and older. Like maybe they had one of these when they were young or like their dad had one or something and kind of relate to it. Yeah, um, that's cool. So, it's cool so if you're to going to the gas station them. on a bike, you're taking this. Oh yeah. <laughs> or it's like, I hate to say it or I'm hopping on an e-bike. Yeah, like, I know. The I mean, Surons, you them, the Surons are it, dude. Yeah. The, so it's different. The Surons are a shitload of fun. They don't have like a feeling to them. Like when I put them in my truck and drive somewhere, I'm not like proud or stoked of owning it. Yeah, it's a convenience thing. It, but like, it is a shitload of fun. Yeah. And that's kind of the thing, like when you load, you drive this around, people are like, oh, what's that? Ah, da, da. And when you ride a Surround around, they're like, that's weird, what is it's that? It's bike, yeah. It's just different, For like, sure. you know? And but you the can't things you can like, get away with are absolutely. the Surround. <laughs> absolutely, we're not gonna talk about all those. We're not going to, but it's, 
it's a lot cool. better off than something that pulses and makes a bunch of exhaust noise. Yeah. So. Sweet. But like what we used to do, like when we were at the Wingo house, like we'd hop on these things right 100 miles a night. Yeah. Like, like all every week. over. All over, yeah. nonstop, 50 deep. Yeah, for no reason, with no, no reason. goal other than to just ride. And yeah, be an asshole. And yeah, you just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we need to just put fuel in and keep going. Keep going. I remember when we were so trying to make power back in the day, we had oh, ethanol dude. and dude, all the little thing. shit we had. The leapfrog game, drafting. Oh, yeah. If you've I, never experienced drafting, you got to get one of these. To experience <laughs> To experience it. Oh, yeah. Like, when you're wild. When there's 20 people and you're the just... slingshot, bro. And then the dude you passed two seconds ago <laughs> yeah, literally comes by you again the whole time yeah. and you're all bringing yourselves up to max speed. Kill switching each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything. It's so <laughs> Super good. Super fun. Super fun. And then I remember one time I had to go pick you up. <laughs> yeah, window the block. Window the block. That. that was in the very beginning. And yeah. you're like, oh, I have this set up. I put this gear set on there. It's like, oh, I can go to 11,000 RPM. To, I rode into Cocoa Beach. And on the way back on 528, like chin on the tank, full tuck, I don't know, 79, 80, just At done. 11,000 RPM yeah. for 20 miles. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do that now, like, but. We used to go everywhere. We used to. Put our girls on the back, dude, dude, and ride two up like 60 miles. <laughs> Through Claremont. Through yeah. Claremont and all that nonstop, dude. Those are the days, man. <laughs> Life was simple. It was a little simpler Life then. Life was simple. We could still do that. We just have to plan it a little bit more. Bro, we can't even get together for dinner now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we do, though. Yeah. We do. We yeah. do better than most. Let's go check your wagon out. I want to see that. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so David has a way cooler wagon than I have. This is the car that he probably doesn't speak about how much money and effort he has into Dude, it. He I went mean, all in. We talked about wagons like forever ago. Like, you know, once the 25 rule hits, we're getting wagons. Yeah. Like, we got, we got wagons. Yeah, like one came up, like I'm a big green guy. So we went down to- It could have been any color though. Yeah, you're right. It could have been any color. <laughs> At this <laughs> point. Went down to Fort Myers, got it. Like, I was so excited. I didn't even really check it out. I get back, find out it's like a rust bucket, like all of them. I tried to so, explain that to him. I said, got, you want to check the hatch, you want to check the jack points, but realistically, you want to check everywhere because these things just collect rust in the most random places. And then the people only fix the ones you would look at. So like, you'd be like, oh no, it looks good. No other place would be rusty. And then you're like, you start digging in and you're like, Bro, this is bad. Big snowball. <laughs> This is bad. Yeah, so I made the mistake of like getting it and then swapping it, doing the interior, all that before it went to body and paint because I didn't want them to like screw it up and then, or me screw it up working on it yep. after. So like we swapped the S54 in it. We did all the driveline stuff, all the, everything, brakes, all that shit. And then interior's done. It goes to body and paint. I'm like, look, there's some service rust in the fender, like the hatch a little bit. I'm like, okay, cool. Like they quoted me, I'm like, doable, perfect. We'll cut that rust out. Like a month later, I get a call, like, hey man, can you come down here? I'm like, it's never good, right? Yeah, it's like, not good. Especially so a body shop. He's like, all four jack points, like, don't even try and jack it up. I'm like, mm. like, uh, cool, fix them. They started tearing it down. It's like, it needs two B pillars. Fix them. Yeah. Like, so it gets to a point where it's like the problem is you had this, already done yeah, everything else, it. and so yeah, I'm like, dude, just go till you don't find any. He's like, you sure? I'm like, yes. So every time he would call famous me, found last this, words. found this, found that, it ended up taking almost a year, but they did a really good job. Harlow's out of a, a Koei did it, and um, car's like brand new now. He cared about it too. He cared about it, cool. yeah. And they usually like don't. He's like, dude, if I would have known it was this big of a job, I wouldn't have taken it, but. You know. All right, so let's jump at it. So E36 Touring yep. was a 320. 20. Yeah. And uh, sunroof car. Yep. This is the original color. Yeah, it's originally Boston. So it's all the gems and, and the, the bay match. E88. Yeah. Ordered those in 21. Stunting like my daddy over here, dude. Woo! That's it's big right there. Got to do it to him, bro. That's doing it to him <laughs> for sure. Got the 245, 35. I actually didn't want 18s, but I put the 996 kit on it, the brakes. Oh yeah, too big. I'm like, I'm about to shave them down fit. to put 17s on there. No, they surprisingly have a pretty oh, yeah, good barrel pretty size. Good. Yeah, you're right. But I have Regamaster sitting upstairs that couldn't go on. I have a 17 and 17s. Speaks to my heart. Yeah. Speaks to my heart. 
So I might take the angle grinder out and make them fit. <laughs> you should probably have the body shop take the angle grinder to it and make them fit. I'm pretty good with the angle grinder. All right. What do you got? You'll see the interior. This yeah. is sick. Let's see if this door opens. Um, Ricardo's are out of Evo 4 Shoo. that we had upholstered uh, with the E34 M5 hurricane pattern. Dude, Ish put the suede's on this thing, up, dude. Boy? Shoo! No headliner sag. I didn't even know I there was a dip for I your did, head back there. I did the headliner at the Dang. same time. Yo, I didn't even know that spot was there because all my wagons all, all sag so bad. Yeah. That's nice. Yep. Well, they stretch for the etched glass too at the dealership in Germany. Where did it come from? Do you know? UK. UK? Mm -hmm. Oh, right hand drive. Right drive. Duh. Duh. Yeah. Re big rear brakes too. Is yeah, that I did the 46 M3 or what is that? Uh, E38 750. Okay. And then Part 996 the caliber. 996 calipers. Damn, yeah. dude. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Captivated coatings out of Merritt Island did the powder coat on the calipers. Okay. Sick. Oh, the door cards with the rain too. Oh yeah, we, dude, we just did it all. Um, I know you're not a two-spoke fan, but I f love that steering wheel. Oh, the steering wheel's cool, dude. Uh, and oh, the active exhaust. Yep. It's the and the, the, the bumper. Oh yeah. oh yeah. What wing is this? It's OEM wing. Oh, is it? Yep. Huh? I don't think I've had one with that yet. I bought it on eBay out of Lithuania where all the other yeah, BMW parts come from. from Lithuania. Yeah. It's crazy. I got a dude over there if you need parts again. Okay. He just gets them so we could. Yeah, I had to it buy up. a, it needs a hood latch cable that had to come from there also because it's right hand drive. Mm. I just haven't done it because either the fender's got to come off. No? Yeah, we got vice grips to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they they well, live in the let's, door, let's, bro. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, Check out this oh, yeah. fiber spoke wheel. Whew. Yeah, that thing is sick. Oh, you got the golf ball knob in there too. Yep. Uh, OEM BMW knob. Yeah. Femoral shifter. Continental radio. OE plus. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, and the matching handbrake Alcantara boot. Stop, dude. <laughs> All in, dude. All in. Buy it? No itch. Strictly. No, I don't want to buy it. I can't afford this. I probably couldn't even trade you my dirt ball 996 for this. The value's probably still higher on the wagon. I don't know, man. Bro, where do you see this motor in here? It's not clean under there, but we'll open it. That's okay. Oh yeah, I got the got the Lux Pack grill in there yeah, too. Yeah, actually came with that, and I left it. I believe in the Lux, dude. My car's weird. I have Lux with fog light deletes. Lux. Oh. I was going to do that. Yeah. So they don't work anyways, and they're yellow. Perfect. So, big active guy over big here. Big active guy. I've never um, seen one with the cover on there before. Yeah, it's the newest system. Okay. So, well, actually, this is their non-intercooled system, but it runs, uh, it's called their Primo Plus kit. They actually made this specifically to fit the 36 chassis. Uh, so, no intercooler, but meth injection. On the Mustang down there, it made 469. What? Yeah. Damn. And it's got it's full fail safe, so like, if the uh, um, if the meth fails, cuts boost. Yeah. It's got an extra bypass or blow off valve. We're gonna call it to. to oh, it does. It. Okay. Yep. Sick. That's cool. I was wondering because obviously the coolant tank, but right hand drive, you had to do that. Yeah. Man, that's that was that's a tight fit. It's a tight engine bay. Yeah. So what's this switch do? Turns the meth system on and off. Okay, got it. Yep. So you could you could potentially just have it off all the time too. Uh, it won't make full boost. Right. It needs to see the meth flow. So That's what I mean. So you could. So you could. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't turn on until like I think three or four psi anyway. So driving around, it's not spraying until Damn, you're in 470 it. 470 wheel is crazy. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. It's. I mean, drive like an old man. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah. the thing about the S54 with that setup is you can't drive it like an old man to enjoy. It. You got to rip on it to get the yeah, power. The S54 is one of my favorite sounding. Ones. Oh yeah. Once they like have a good system on them, and you the exhaust the, is important. Yeah, and with the blower, it sounds NA, so it doesn't yep. have that like turbo muffle. It just sounds like raw horsepower. Yeah, I think too the blower helps with getting rid of some of the rasp because of the exhaust flow. Yeah, I think actually, the S54 like has a tone from 35 to like 7,000 sometimes yep. that it doesn't fill the exhaust. But with the blower, it, uh, it does. So I feel like for some reason the blower ones always sound better. 
I think a lot of the reason, like you associate that with the blowers, because with forced induction, they don't run as much ignition timing, oh. and it changes the exhaust. Now. Yeah, you're right. Cars that have to run less timing are always more powerful. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got all the timing in mind for the NA. NA, models. yeah. Because that makes like 350 wheel NA on a stock that's motor. That's the strongest V4. Yeah, it's all oh, of the it. TI, right? Yeah, ethanol, yeah. airbox, header, like. It's got a slightly decked head, but it's like really leaning on it. True. They um, sound good with those air boxes. I kind of wanted yeah. to do that. Yeah. If you got rid of the clutch fan, you'd have made 500. Dude, I don't trust these old electronics. But I don't know. But yeah, probably. No, my <laughs> on the dyno, my clutch fan, I took it off. So my car made 322. Mm -hmm. I took the clutch fan off and the next pull made 350. And, and this is the heavy feet. duty one too, yeah, so it's worse. even more, yeah. It, it doesn't make a difference up top, it just makes more of a difference in the mid-range because it turns that. on earlier. Yeah. But you need it in Florida, that's the thing. Like, in Florida you can't risk it for 20 or 30 horsepower. Yep. So. These are the, the coilovers you spec Oh yeah. travel. Yep. And then SLR camber plates. Oh right, for the extra camber. Yep. Yep. Checks out. Checks out. Still rubs in the back. Uh, that's because you need to limit your travel, your long travel. Then it'll ride like crap though. Yeah, I think it just needs 17s. <sighs> it's rough. Could take the angle grinder to the back of those E88s and push them in a little more. I think you need to take the torch and the heat gun to the quarter panel. You want to do it? Nope. <laughs> but your body shop guy probably could. <laughs> oh, scared. You like that? A little extra O-ring gasket yeah. on each corner. That's a Z3... A Z3M? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Those are getting hard to find, dude. Just buy them new, huh? Yeah, but new, they're hard to find. Oh. Yeah. Like, they've been out of stock anywhere. I tried to buy one for my street car the other day. I ended up just putting a stock one in. Dude, uh, I think Zionsville makes a really nice Z36 swap. Four swap. Street car shit. But it has the, the Zions, match the oil cooler. Yeah, Zionsville. Yeah. Yeah. They've always been really expensive. They yeah. make good stuff. Yeah, they make great stuff. Yeah. Sick. I think PWR makes one too. PWR does make one. Also, good, also good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> I like the finer things in life. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you're at this point, <laughs> you just do what you gotta do, you know? Yeah. The most expensive E36 I wagon. Mean, 12 years ago, we would have bought a circle track radiator, zip tied it in. And 12 years ago? <laughs> I, still, yeah. I still do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have a Porsche at my house with a, one of those in it. I like it. <laughs> so, yeah. This is like work area. We actually just set this up for you, Chelsea. It wasn't like this before, but like, Chelsea's coming in to make it nice. <laughs> That's uh, Spencer Hill. Working on stuff for say This bike belongs to Ant Silva, who's an OG OG. He's had this bike for like 10 years. Owns Apex Fabrication out of Merritt Island. Did some cool stuff like this sprocket guard he made. like. Just really trick stuff when you want to be able to fast change sprockets and not have that covered. Oh, but yeah. still have protection where if the chain breaks, it doesn't put a hole in the case. That checks out. Yeah, that's cool. Like race parts, so it's it's pretty neat. Um, Spencer's wearing one of our new shirts. You guys should go buy a shirt. Oh, oh yeah. They'll hook you up. Oh, yeah, I need to get a shirt. That's Shout cool. out to Nate Hamilton for that guy. Oh, yeah. In the top, arm back, dude. Right, that's actually the camera. We're going to meet him here in a second. Oh, sick. That's it, dude. Arm yeah. back, tuck. That's right. <laughs> People don't know. People man. don't know. People don't know. That's an extra mile an hour just yeah, with the arm for every sure. time, dude. They have no idea. For sure. It if looks you've funny, never but... raced scooters or groms or low displacement anything. Or mini trucks, you gotta fold the mirrors in. <laughs> anything, you gotta do that. Even as far as like Spec Miata. I oh, feel like absolutely. these are kind of like the Spec Miata of absolutely. Motor motorcycle racing. Yeah. Cause like, it's the same thing. It's, you have to extract every little bit and there's excitement in every little bit. Dude, you put springs on the brake pad pins to spread them out. So they don't touch. Yeah. Yep. You clean the wheel spacers down so they don't touch the dust seals. Yeah. All that little stuff. Yeah. Chains are on loose. Yeah. Probably the maximum tire pressure you can run and still have it be really hooked up. Yeah. It'd probably be better for me to just lose 10 pounds, but yeah. it's easier to spend money, right? Yeah. <laughs> True, it's very true. Fancy shock on there too. Yeah, just put that on and racing go over here. You get a, an air shock on it before. Mm. We're gonna do the matching racing goes fronts on this. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
it's funny people like will build a bike and at the time like 2015 or whatever use the best stuff yeah and invest a thousand dollars in suspension fifteen hundred dollars and a few years later you're pulling that stuff off to change it up again i don't think i've ever had a car where i put coilovers on it and then swapped them for different coilovers yeah so, true you see that with bikes true yeah, I think too, like your level of bike racing is probably still farther than the car stuff. I mean, yeah, I guess for me, I'll let for you, I'll let yeah, it, for sure. I think people that are as deep into it with the car stuff are doing that, revalving yeah. the shocks Absolutely. and doing things. So it's, once a race or whatever. Yeah, so I think it's it's all it's all relevant. I was telling Cam that the other day, like bike suspension for me, I can't really feel the difference. But like, put me in a car and I can tell you. Right. It's so weird. I yeah. just never learned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have lots of time behind the wheel, too. Yeah. So, sure. Of different things, too, you know. We're going to go bargain on, like, family now. Cam and Callie, they own CJR Performance. Very similar business. Uh, more kind of focus on the CJR stuff. Yeah, the Dynajet 250i. This rig so, is sick, though. Full Eddie current wow. bike dyno. Yeah, that's cool. This is good for a couple hundred horsepower, right? Seven or eight hundred. No yeah. bikes are gonna make that. They make seven. These are good for seven, eight hundred. Yeah, that's because crazy. you can link it and run the 250iX, I think they call it, where you can run quads. Oh, right. So basically, same setup. That's cool. Yeah, I was hearing it earlier on the dyno, and I'm like, that's a loaded dyno yeah. too. That's it's cool. Time to run for sure. Yeah. This is Dylan, he's Spencer's brother, actually, who you just met okay. over here. I don't know what he's tinkering with something. He's got the ring grinder out. Yeah, he's got oh. me some rings for a 132 so, kit. Yeah, guys. Nice. Cam used to live in Missouri. Two years ago, they moved down. We were sharing that little shop, and once this side became available, I uh, ended up over here. But we've worked together for years, like, remotely, and it was super cool to have him here and bounce ideas off each other. And uh, it's been working out. I got some exhaust too. There's a couple of bronze oh, yeah. pipes. I had one of those. Oh yeah. Oh no. no. It's a cool bike. Yeah. yeah. Much more dirt bike stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And they get the shaded side of the building, so in the summer it stays a little cooler. Oh nice. That is cool. Yeah cold when it's cold. Yeah. This actually just went in the market yesterday. This is a CRF 110 engine. Crankshaft has the two main bearings, just like a car. Uh, and then on the other side, it goes through like a one-way clutch system, so they can be semi-auto. And then there's another bearing in the crankcase, so it supports the other Support bearing, yep. This side from the factory does not, so it's the flywheel and just the nut. Oh. Um, once you start revving them super high, we've experienced this with the Groms, or if you don't run another support, they go out of true, it's easier for them to break, especially when you start like modifying flywheels and not really balancing them. This reminds me of the go-pad stuff back in the day. Exactly, it's like a third bearing support on a <laughs> yeah. go-pad, right? Perfect. Like, you try to squeeze a tire in a 950 and you put all that that force on it and it, yeah, snaps you Jump it one time and snap the crank Exactly. So, the, we replaced the factory flywheel nut with this guy that has a collar that a bearing can slide onto. Uh, um, these are made down the street locally, same thing with these guys that we just drew up in CAD, printed it, made sure it fit, and then put it all together. So the nut holds the flywheel on. And then this is the factory stator. The bearing drops in. This guy, we have a little notch there so it lines up, retains the bearing. Of course, more. titanium hardware just because. Of Why not? So now there's a bearing in the cover, and then when you slide it on here now, you can see there's a support. Yeah. So there's a, now there's even support on opposite ends of the crank plus the main bearings. And like when we modify so these things, around. they are up to like nine grand stock and we're taking them to 11, five, 12. The extra RPM, especially with the extra power, actually, you know, you know how it goes. Start stressing everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. So that's really a simple install this, too. Yeah, not bad at all. Anyone can do it. Yeah. And like, if you don't want to drain the oil, you lay the bike on its side, all the oil goes to that side. <laughs> that's pull a the cover off. Move. <laughs> yeah. That's like a track side move. That's oh, of course. That's how you do it. Um, that's cool. So yeah, this was something that we started on probably early January, testing and running through having a prototype done, and then. They I just feel like it would even get quieter that way. 
Possibly. Yeah. And then if it doesn't fit, you know your crank's not true. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know you're in big if trouble. It, yeah. If you go to put it on and like <laughs> it fits when you rotate it, but then it, yeah. That's another it's one of those happen. things like the roll bars. When you sell pre-built roll bars on a fixture oh, and yeah. you send it to somebody and they're really nice, 997 GT3 and it doesn't fit and you have to tell the customer. This shit's tweaked. Hey, there's a reason why your car doesn't fit. Yeah. Or E36 strut bars. Yeah. Buy a mason bar and it doesn't fit. <laughs> don't line up. It's like, hmm. Yep. Waller it out. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, SKF bearing, tie hardware. That's all, that stuff's all made locally. That's pretty cool. This is our 149 kit that was in that yellow drum over there. Okay. Gaskets, this is how it comes like, when you get it from us. Pin, clips. Uh, we casted the cylinder, so it's like an OEM style cylinder. It has our name in it, it says 149 instead of 125. I don't know if you can see yeah, that. Yeah, cool. And then forged piston. Look at that little guy. Yeah, it's cute, huh? Fifty <laughs> little gas ports. Fifty-five too. millimeter uh, oil ports. Yeah. Oh, so oh. horizontal motors. Yeah, yeah it'll splash yeah, and get yeah, into the ring. Oh yeah. Cool. You're right, cause it's on the bottom. Yep. Bottom and top. Oh, so that's how the skirts stuff. get lubed. Yeah. That's There's cool. a squirter in there that sprays right at the rod area, so it disperses it. That's cool. And gets to the oil rings. What kind of compression bump does that give you over like a stock set? Uh, it's about two and a half points. Oh shit. Stock. So okay. a lot. Wow. It does require premium fuel. Yeah. Which a lot of people. That's one of the main reasons they do fail. They don't drain the 87 out of the tank. Mm. And you know, like, oh, it'll be fine, and no, it won't. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's there cool. are kits out there that are lower compression, flat top pistons, but nah, if you're gonna do it, it, you're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, it's not like premium is gonna hurt the bank when you're putting a gallon in. I know, I, I always laugh about that. But the yeah. stock bikes run best on like 87. Yeah. So like maybe yeah, they're just- they're low yeah. compression. Right. And they don't, yeah, so that's the thing. If you're going from a stock bike to this, you gotta drain the tank, which is kind of a mission. Yeah. Kind of annoying. Um, titanium axles for the Grom. We do front, rear, and the swing arm pivot. Uh, we actually didn't do them to save the weight, that's a plus. We did them because on the race bikes, you have to run axle sliders mm, that slide over sure. here. No, uh, if you need to replace one, you gotta pull the little axle out because the stock one's a bolt. Oh. So double-sided. Same thing it. with the foot peg mounts, the rear sets. If you break a peg or something, you need to service it. You gotta pull your swing arm pivot bolt, which holds the swing arm and the shock and everything. Uh, so now you pull a nut off and it's serviceable. It. And you're like, okay. I might as well just make it at a time. Yeah, exactly. Um, Why not? Why not? Uh, valve spring retainers, titanium for the old Grom. Uh, helps with valve flow and some of the super high revving stuff. Other miscellaneous titanium hardware. This is oh, I remember that. pressure plate. Yeah. So the springs go here. This is the lightest one on the market. Um, JT helped design this and kind of like simulated and got all the weight down and they made all the, the proper cuts to keep it strong. Yeah, the factory ones are it. cast and you upgrade the spring pressure, they crack. Breaks them, yeah. So replace the billet. This is our S1 camshaft for the 22 to current Grom. So tiny. Yeah, it's cute, huh? <laughs> Two valve, bro. Two valve. And um, our process with the cams is we buy a bunch of blanks, have them all reground, test them, test them, test them, and then this one actually raises the curve everywhere. It doesn't lose anywhere. On the older bikes, a lot of the cams would kind of sacrifice one area for the other. Um, it rides like factory, just elevate. Everything they So are. probably our, our best seller for that bike. Uh, this is one of our pistons, the high comp stock bore for the older ground. We also make them for the current gen. Another little cute guy here. These are casted. Um, high comp, offset valve. Mm. We modeled it so it's a full circle design for skirt strength since it's oh right not forged. The stock one is yeah cut yep coil ports uh dual here one to feed the skirt one to feed the o-rings and then the compression on this guy is like 13 to 1 so yeah. it's high but it'll run on 93 pump that's sweet yeah the stock yeah. floor stuff is crazy that's, that's the most fun now yeah because yeah, it's peaky too yep it's like an old two-stroke yep yeah, I remember when I rode your bike at like 6,000 it hits. Yeah. It's like two yeah. strokes. And then they rode to like 12, 12 and a half. Yep. Um, this is for the new Grom. It's a Kotaka oil cooler kit, but we make the ports here. So that goes on the cylinder head and- It's the tablet cover, the valve cover. Yep. So the factory, the new bikes run the oil feed to the head through the cover, the factory cover. Mm -hmm. uh, factory one, it runs through here and then dips back in to feed the head of oil. 
it might be kind of hard, hard to understand, but it goes through a head stud, through the port, up through this, and back in, and it drops it right on the intake rocker Got to lubricate it. the head. We added two M10 fittings so that you can plumb a banjo and feed an oil cooler and come back in. Got it. Uh, and have, they have enough pressure and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, they, I mean, they do make high flow oil pumps, but okay. the factory pump we have an issue with. That's cool. Especially since they're RPM driven, they're chain driven, so, or sorry, gear driven. So the higher you rev it, the more, more flow oil. there is. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. With no, like, limitation, it's max, whatever yeah, flow. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. we're revving them above stock, it's gonna make yeah. more Yeah, and they don't cavitate or have any issues? Nope. That's I mean, cool. not that we've seen. That's cool. So. You would have seen by now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. on the older Groms, we always change the pumps. On the newer one, um, pretty I, good. they're pretty good. I still change them just because, but the testing that we did with the factory one uh, was pretty good. Sick. And yeah, we do pistons for all the models, like. Yeah, you do multiple cams too. Yeah, right? multiple cams. Yeah. It's just kind of a glimpse of uh, That's it. How, how the process goes. Sweet. Thanks, dude. Yeah, yeah man.